uh, again, we're policy coding, and uh, let's begin by talking briefly about the final script. Uh, towards the end, we, uh, uh, the first thing is we, we had a few merge conflicts this time, uh, but this is largely because we decided to focus on the UI, which means we had to work on the same files, so this was uh, expected. So that's coming. Um, uh, however, I think we would have saved some time uh, if we uh, if we had worked together more tightly, uh, meaning we um, we worked on some pr pretty big tasks with pretty radical changes, and that's part of the reason why it was uh, so much conflict. So if we had uh, or code with each other more frequently. Uh, I think we will we'll save some time on that. Uh, in addition, towards the end, we started slacking off a little with, da with daily standards, as in we didn't, um, we didn't communicate as diligently as we have been doing uh, for most of the project. But, but still, it doesn't mean that we went days without updating each other. Just uh, not so much... Uh, uh, communication in, in the weekends for support. Um, let's show our issue board. Uh, as you can see from this, um, uh, let's also <coughs> just look at the burnout chart while we're at it. Um, first off, we, uh, we created uh, several issues along the way, uh, same as we did last spring. Uh, and that's because uh, there were a couple of issues that originated in the previous print but uh, turned out to be a lot bigger than I expected so we decided to extend them into this print. And also we, we created some issues along the way uh, as we figured out uh, what, what exactly we needed to do and what we needed to focus on. Mm. <coughs> so th the issues that were not completed uh, we knew about those going to the sprint. Uh, they were prioritized away in favor of focusing on the UI. And also uh, the mm, uh, and, and uh, the couple issues that we had started on but didn't complete uh, turn also turned out to be pretty big tasks that uh, Lars and I worked on. Uh, we hadn't broken them down, so we were unable to complete them. But we did. Uh, mm, yeah. uh, okay, uh, so I'll show you what exactly we did. Uh, Lars made a recording of uh, uh, of his technical accomplishments, uh, and his was on the side of uh, creating a new entry. So we clicked on the node, and uh, the box pop pops up with all the inputs for creating the entry. <coughs> and uh, I'll show you the live code of what I did. Uh, I worked on. The same thing, but from the perspective of um, creating a document in the uh, in memory data structure. So even though it looks kind of the same, it's not uh, it's different code. That's part of the reason why it was so hard to merge. <coughs> so when I create an entry, uh, I get an, an empty graph. It's just an empty root node, and uh, this is it looks the same, but it's different code. Uh, as well as it. So uh, we have a pop up with the create entry button, which when you click on it, it should pop up the, um, the, uh, the box with all the inputs that you saw. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, th those are the technical results of the last script. Um, <coughs> so let's take a step back and look at the whole project. Uh, we we talked a little bit about the uh, our, our experiences with the whole whole thing and 
we all agree that uh, we found the project engaging and challenging. Uh, it was uh, we we learned a whole lot. Uh, it was very uh, very productive in that, in that way. <coughs> the time constraints were real, but uh, we we believe we made good sound decisions all along that helped steer the project in the right direction. Uh, I think we didn't run into any big dead ends where we had to turn back and discard our work. <coughs> uh, we. Uh, by spending time on our decisions regarding um, the, uh, <coughs> choices of technology and data structure, uh, I think we avoided a lot of work that uh, turned turn out or ended up being unused or unusable. And all in all, uh, I think this was wiser than attacking the problem with brute force and uh, wasting energy that way. <coughs> so, um, our goals for this project were perhaps too ambitious, uh, given the time constraints. So, uh, something we faced over and over again. It turned out to be a lot more work than we expected, um, than we thought at first. Uh, as for me, I can see in this course, having projects that are perhaps too large to realistically complete, is probably the best way to learn. It's how we really learn. Um, so yeah, we have uh, we have certainly we uh, learned the importance of prioritizing our efforts. <coughs> uh, let's talk a little bit about our Scrum workflow. Uh, going through the project, all the group members had uh, well were well familiar with version control in Git. So we had we had no issues with uh, Git or anything like uh, version control. <coughs> Mm. Overall, we are very happy with our Scrum workflow, and it helped that all the group members worked so well together. I think we were lucky in that regard. Not all, uh, not all people, uh, <coughs> uh, not not all uh, combinations of people can work together without uh, with so little conflict, interpersonal conflict. So yeah, we were lucky. Um, uh, but my takeaway from this uh, is that good structure does so much for a project uh, and for everybody's sanity. So having a good workflow and a good structure is something I value very highly from now on. Uh, quality assurance. Uh, you think about that? Uh, we were only three group members, so uh, we, we have been able to individually review each other's work. And that's not possible in a project with like 50 members. <coughs> so uh, on, there were a lot of issues that we approved without further ado, and uh, then we didn't give each other written feedback. But we did uh, ask questions or give comments if there were, if there was anything, which there was sometimes. But uh, again, on a majority of issues, we just approved them, and uh, because there it wasn't really anything to pick on. Uh, other things in quality assurance, we we worked unit tasks for a large part of the code, but uh, in, in the final few issues we didn't have time to do it. Um, okay, and uh, uh, you mentioned security quite a few times. So as for our project, since it's just to, to develop a prototype, uh, security hasn't really been a concern for us. Uh, I think Mr. Wiggins can concede on that. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, web security, we haven't really, we haven't had to think about that because it's just supposed to be a prototype. Um, another point is that we do depart from correctness. Uh, I mean, of course you said security was not an issue and you made sure that whatever anybody is doing is correct. So we would each other work, but is there any other quality Or you thought about it, or not at all? Mm. We didn't think about anything beyond that. No. We didn't talk about that. Okay. Mm. That's all on my list. Uh, do you have any other questions? Anything we haven't covered? 
There's a comment about uh, security. So even if you not consider security a primary issue, you usually use some defensive programming techniques and constructs to make sure that you're not introducing unnecessary things which yeah, could yeah. potentially be exploited. So have you like linting. Yeah, like linting yeah. or unit testing and making sure certain yeah. things are yeah, like validated, are input validation, things like this. We did have input validation, and we also fixed some like packages that were that have some vulnerability issues. Yeah, so yeah, yeah we did okay. that. Yeah. And as I said, we did write unit tests for most of the code. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so you, you you shouldn't say like we didn't do kind of security. You, you kind of did some, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, we did like yeah. I guess what I meant was we didn't. Uh, uh, we didn't get the TLS certificate then we Okay, uh, if you have any questions for Lars, he's ready. Oh, I just wrote that. Uh, I can read it. Okay. Lars has that. I did take some notes of what I wanted to talk about in the form of your stuff. So my first thought was, weird project but uh, seemed very cool at the same time, and it has been exciting and challenging all along. The project was perfectly suited to further explore concepts like data structures and uh, non-traditional database incidents like quark databases. Natural language was uh, all set in a domain of policy coding. We were challenged to think creative and untraditional as for what could work out and not in regards to user experience and UI. Although we didn't get the time to explore all of it, I feel we took the project in a good direction. All group members, myself included, have participated on mostly all parts of the project. Everything from client and server, as well as domain model and conceptualization, either by concrete work or our ideas. We have functioned good as a team, with daily stand-ups and meetings in the evening when we found it, when we found it necessary. We just like the way to stand up towards the end. For Scrum, we used GitLab's issue board, which I think worked out well. I'm used to Jira in my project that work. I like Jira, but I don't, didn't miss it in this project. Uh, 
like for further needs. Christopher has been a great product owner with advising and clarification along the way. And kudos to my group members. I was lost. So uh, our project was about the uh, mobile app for pregnant women and uh, new mothers. Uh, according to the previous print, as I told you, that we have a total of three scenarios given by the user experience team, and uh, we included one for the sign up and login. So up till now, we are able to implement uh, three of them, and uh, for the fourth one, we need some guidance from the product owner. So we have included that in the um, further development. Uh, in this sprint, uh, first I'll uh, quickly go through the sprint four, and then uh, I'll um, give a over uh, walk through of the whole group, what we did throughout the course, and then individually uh, they can tell about their experience. And for the one member which is in Trondheim, he has sent us a recorded video. Um, in this sprint, we uh, tried to work on the on scenario three, uh, in which we had to. Uh, make a graph uh, for the for the growth of the baby, uh, like uh, he its head, head circumference and its weight and height. So, uh, in this, as I told you in the previous one, we had a challenge of implementing graphs in the mobile interface. So, we were able to implement that uh, correctly, and we have received the uh, file to uh, run on our mobile phone as well. So now it's completely integrated and uh, working on the phone. Uh, let me so uh, again, um, uh, mostly uh, the things include for uh, scenario three, for example, graph in the front end, and we have to make uh, develop the back end API for this module. And also we included some uh, testing tasks for user interface. So there were a few bugs that we were able to fix in this sprint. Uh, if we go through the GitHub repository, uh, we have also updated um, the documentation uh, for the API, such as sample response and uh, sample data, which um, can be given to each endpoint. Uh, okay, so overall, if uh, I tell you uh, tell you about the experience of the whole group, uh, most of us were uh, like we didn't have any experience of working with the professional environment. So working in the Scrum was like first experience we 
uh, had to study about it and it was a good experience working in uh, implementing the scrum process. Uh, if I talk about personally, I have worked with uh, project management tools but for working with Jira it was my first time so it was a little bit confusing at the start uh, but I got used to it so I'm quite sure it would be very helpful for me in, uh, in future. Um, the, the biggest challenge in, uh, in the tools we faced was with Bitbucket uh, because Git was confusing at the start for some of the members, uh, especially uh, different version control with the branches and we faced some uh, merge conflicts. So now we can say I can say that all of us are comfortable working with the uh, Git and Bitbucket as well. Uh, for communication we use Slack and um, we use, as I told you we use Jira for task assignments and for the boards. Uh, one other tool that we use for uh, testing our API was Postman. Uh, there are a couple of tools available but we prefer this one. It was very simple uh, to go with. Um, for the technology stack, for the front end we use Flutter and for back end we use .NET. And we kind of took a risk for both of these because um, I had experience working with backend but with different technologies so uh, even Andre has very little experience of working with .NET so we had we kind of challenged ourselves uh, working with this technology so we took some online courses and we have implemented the API uh, very well it's working smoothly and performance is also good and even uh, same thing as the Flutter if uh, Emil will talk about his experience as well uh, so none of us has worked in the Flutter as well before. So the reason we chose Flutter is because it's um, cross-platform and as I told you we have uh, Android ready and for iOS all we have to do is make a developer account on Apple and uh, we would have an app running on for iOS as well. So no extra work needs to be done. Um, uh, for teams, we divided our teams into two sub-teams uh, one for the back end and one for the front end and uh, then we assigned two team leads uh, the people who has a little bit of experience of development so they were assigned as team lead for each team and um, uh, we started with the daily sprints um, to assign the task and to check our progress uh, but after like a week we found out that it's not really working for us so because um, there, there was a little bit of this. There is actually a little bit of difference working in a professional environment and, and students working in uh, on a project because some of us had classes and then uh, assignments. So obviously, it happened a lot that, for example, uh, each day I did not get the time at all to work uh, on something. So there was no point of uh, call a meeting for everyone when uh, a person or two had no had not make any progress. So we changed those meetings to uh, weekly and uh, like we planned the sprint at the start and then we assigned deadlines for one week for half of the task. And everyone was uh, supposed to complete those tasks uh, by those deadlines. So um, that actually worked quite well for us. And in the last two or th uh, two sprints, uh, what we had to do is in this thing, uh, like uh, meeting in the uh, in weekly meeting what problem we had was because we were all working remotely so the thing is if I am working I face some problem if we are sitting in one room uh, we have a chance to talk about our problem with our colleagues so we can come up with a solution right away but the problem in this uh, thing was that if I am working since I was working alone uh, I came across a problem because we are not working in one room so the problem was I had to come up with the solution myself. So every one of us actually faced this problem. So th the solution we came up with, for example, uh, first we decided uh, a fixed time uh, where we can meet physically uh, whenever it was possible. And then we tried to assign a fixed time every day uh, that we can work all together uh, on a problem. So by doing this we actually make good progress uh, by implementing this solution. Um, other problems that we faced was uh, in the start we did not have any server available <coughs> so the front end team was working but they we were working on the back end API but they 
had no access to the APIs although I was preparing the documentation so the temporary solution we came up with uh, I prepared some JSON files like sample response uh, they can um, work with but again that wasn't a very uh, permanent solution because all they can implement was uh, get uh, commands not post commands because they were able to read uh, from those files but they were not able to write so um, then uh, we implemented, uh, we deployed our API on the Azure server, but later we came up with the problem of the cost with the server because trial was over. So it, al although we were given the option to uh, set up our server on OpenStack, uh, but it was a lot of work to set up a web server on the new machine. So we decided to divide the cost uh, with our team members because it was it saved a lot of time for us. So it's still working, like at the end of the month, we uh, have the budget to uh, run on our server. Uh, as again, that issue tracking thing, like we uh, try to work uh, in the at the same time together. So um, then the problem was like we had to make a lot of assumptions since we could not have a meeting with the product owner. We do have uh, tomorrow. So we will discuss those things. So. We tried to, uh, all, all we were given was with a document with the basic requirements and we had some uh, user experience, uh, user interfaces. So we had to uh, uh, implement whatever we could understand. So we worked on the modules, we were sure that we are uh, going on the right path. Uh, as I told you, we have implemented two of them and uh, just one of them is remaining. Uh, Uh, yes, uh, which uh, there was one problem which actually uh, created, um, um, which actually slowed down the progress for a bit because one of the experienced front front-end developer left in the middle of the project and kind of in the middle of the sprint. So that actually uh, slowed down the progress, but we were managed to um, make up for that. Uh, then um, the biggest problem which we faced one of the biggest I must say was that uh, it was a dependency problem for example uh, if one of our group member is leaving although uh, like it was planned in advance uh, so the tasks were divided accordingly but the thing is if we have assigned a task to a specific person then the other people are dependent on that uh, particular team member because if he would complete a task then others would be able to work on their tasks. Obviously, there were kind of hierarchy in the task. So all we had to do is push each other again and again uh, to <laughs> work uh, to complete the task as soon as possible. Um, for review and testing, um, for example, if I talk about my team, me and Andre was working on the back end. So uh, if I push the code in a branch for a specific task Andre reviewed it and told me if there were some problems even with the formatting so we changed it and similarly I did uh, the same to him uh, I can tell you one example like he implemented the the whole controller class and model classes and when I was reviewing the code uh, we hopped on a call and I I asked him to present the demo like how is it working and it was working perfectly, but the structure was very complex. So I, I um, suggested a new solution, <laughs> which he had to implement again from the start. So as it was working, but it was very complex. Scalability, it was the major concern was scalability. It was very uh, difficult to scale that solution. So uh, with a smiley face, he implemented the whole thing again. <laughs> so I really appreciate that. And for the testing, in the actual testing, we started in the last two sprints for the backend API and user interface. And as you can see in our uh, sprint graph as well, okay. that we always had like, even in the previous sprint, we finished some tasks and then added new because we did testing in at the start of the sprint and we always went that whatever we, whatever the bugs we found, we would fix in the same sprint. So that's why our uh, sprint graphs are like first go down a bit and then go up, and otherwise we plan the. Is it possible to scroll the page there? Yeah. 
uh, if I talk about myself, what I learned during the uh, project was uh, I have worked as a scrum master before, but not with the remote teams. So it was totally different working with the remote team, especially in uh, working as a student. Because as I told you, in the professional environment, we are always in one room and working together for a specific number of hours. So I found that much easier, I must say. And uh, uh, then I can conclude one thing that Scrum obviously helps a lot in achieving a progress on completing a project. Uh, but what I found is uh, we do not need to follow this process religiously. Uh, we can twist a bit as per our requirement, whatever is um, working fine, working better for us. Because I, I guess the progress is important rather than just the process. And, um, and communication uh, must be very clear. So we made sure that even if we are working or not, uh, we ask each of the group member to have Slack or Skype available on our mobile phone all the time. So if anyone has a question, uh, everyone should be available to uh, answer those queries. Not right away available to work on that, at least you would be able to answer them. So that was my experience. Uh, okay, uh, you said a lot of stuff. Like uh, some points. Actually, I kind of disagree with the process. I think it's actually really important. If you use, I, I mean, I don't like bureaucracy, like doing everything according to the process. But like for a bigger pro, pro uh, for this pro, uh, this kind of project is kind of small. We could we didn't need to follow res res religiously. The, the Scrum methodology. Like, I think it would be more productive in a bigger project to follow it religiously. I mean, it's an agile process, so it, it was made to be more efficient, I think, you know? So I, I would follow it more, res more religiously in a different environment, in different project, you know? Uh, Akif was the Scrum Master. I think he did everything perfectly, like, Really good scrum master. The the test was were well designed, well divided for for the members. Um, we had some issues with Jira, but we managed to learn. Um, we faced some problems with uh, uh, stipulating the time limit, the time for each test, because it was hard. Because we were not uh, we had no experience, or we had no, I mean, you had no basis, so you can't, it's harder to, to, to design, a, the, uh, designate a time for a task, you know, when you have no basis. So it was a bit harder, and, oh, we used Skype also, uh, uh, we used Slack and Skype for, for the meetings. Um, well, I, uh, okay, my, uh, now, oh yeah, uh, we divided, as he said, uh, two teams, and I think it's really good, because, like, uh, I think it's, if it's more scalable, more productive to divide the team, when it's, because it can scale more, you know, because when you work, I mean, for my personal experience, when you work in a startup, usually you do everything, and you do everything, but you don't do everything great, you know? It's I, I personally like more to divide and test more exhaustively, you know, instead of like doing this personally. I like it. Uh, I think we had to, it would be better if we had uh, more contact with the owner, like constantly, uh, every like, uh, every end of sprint, show him, oh, this is what we've done. And you know, and have a constant feedback, I think it's really good. It would be really good. Um, I had some experience with .NET Core, but uh, I hadn't used the uh, Entity Framework, or or am I, or, oh, R, M. I used the uh, and Hibernate, but like, uh, so it was a bit challenging for me. Um, also, I worked with. Uh, it's way different if you if you start uh, working a project that is already in progress, then if you start a new project right from the start. 
so it was d a different experience for me. Um, oh yeah, the testing. Um, we use it uh, code reviews, like I use it to review a kids code and this person with the teams, you know, each team review the each other members team code. And we use it some exhausting testing by hand and some and <coughs> Yeah, we did some input validation and some and some fields like password and email and and it was really good. I th I mean, it, I think it sometimes some bugs escaped, you know, we, we couldn't find it and then we found it later. And so, I mean, if if it was a, a bigger project, it would be better to have one person to test also, because. You could avoid this because it's more uh, expensive. It's more. It takes more time to correct a, a error. Like after some time, than in the beginning when you you are developing the system. It's like <coughs> and yeah, I think that's it. That's my experience. <coughs> well, uh, I was pretty new to this because I uh, mostly I never worked in a team project before. I mostly worked in individual projects, so it was a new thing for me. And I never worked in Jira or Scrum or on this big package, so it took a lot of time for me to get used to this. Because uh, first, when I started, I just saw the screenshots and start making <coughs> the mobile apps, but I didn't know that we need to mm, take issues from Scrum and let others know that we are doing that. So I didn't know about that as well, so I learned about that as well. And the big bucket, um, um, it was a little bit confusing at start because uh, I mostly didn't update my master code and just started working on my branch. So I also, um, Emil and Akib uh, helped me a lot about, uh, in that process and told me how that the proper way is to do that. And after that, I got the hang of it and I started to work on that. and. This was a good experience, but uh, I think uh, one of the issues uh, I was having that mm, mm, during the code reviews, we, uh, if I worked uh, on an issue, I needed to wait for the other guys to review it, and I couldn't work on it any further more. So once I started working a little more on the, the next issues, but after that, when after four or five days he reviewed, my team leader reviewed the code, he told me that there was some errors with that. So after that, I needed to come back to that issue again, and all the work I did after in the next four or five days, that was wasted. So this was a little bit of issue I was having because I needed to wait a lot for the other guy to review it. And uh, mostly then after that, it was OK. And uh, I really uh, uh, liked working the Scrum in the end, and I enjoyed working a lot. And I, I think I learned a lot because I really didn't have any experience working in mobile app as well. So that was also a new experience and working in a team I never worked before. So I also now understand what is required to work in a team. Yeah. Okay. So you show the other members. I work on the mobile app of the Spire project. Uh, we decided to go with Google's Flutter framework because you can compile to native iOS and Android uh, with the same source code. But we knew that the customer in uh, Inland wanted to have apps to support both platforms. So we decided to use Flutter instead of just implementing for either iOS or Android. I don't think any one of us in the team had any experience with Flutter. So we probably would have been a bit more productive with only implementing an Android version of that with Kotlin, for example. Uh, so that was a risk that we took because of the possibilities of compiling to both uh, iOS and Android. Uh, usually I'm a full time back end developer, so I really found it found out how challenging it is to write mobile apps and especially having state between screens uh, and uh, updates in the back end and async calls very different from what I usually do if we could have done the project again I guess there's a few things uh, 
I would have done differently. Um, uh, I wish that we had deployed the backlink earlier and split up issues by features and not split them up into one backend issue and then another issue uh, for the front end for the same feature. If we had deployed the backend from day one, we could have implemented the backend and the front end uh, at the same time before we deem the issue as done and closed. Then we could have been more agile in terms of changing things in the front end or in the back end if uh, a feature didn't feel right for, for our front end test subject. In hindsight, I also think we have benefited from uh, having uh, maybe a more collaborative sprint planning instead of distributing that work. Uh, we probably should have done it in a meeting together uh, at the start of every sprint. For everyone could have chimed in, chimed in on to construct key ratios and discuss the proposed solutions for them a bit more. Uh, it also felt a bit non agile to not involve the customer from the start. Uh, it felt a bit like one in the dark with just a prototype to work from. So we knew how the screens were going to look, uh, but uh, we probably knew from the start that we wouldn't be able to finish all of the proposed features of the app. So some prioritization and focus points from the product owner from the app side might be really helpful. Uh, for all we know, we might have implemented uh, uh, least important features. And uh, that's that's the most important uh, it's fun. Any questions? I worked on the mobile app and it's tired. I thought it's finished. Yeah, it's finished. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Any questions? different locations and uh, each one is like he is a uh, one is the like he is doing a full time job and uh, other members was having some other assignments so the reason we had these gaps is because the days we fixed for working was with some with some delays so that is the thing it's not a very uh, smooth chart going down but it's kind of a stress uh, that's the thing. The task was like every, not very small, but not very long. So we were when we started working together, we were able to do it with whatever we planned for the day. But was it was also that uh, you was uh, or or making new or finalizing code was more important, but even more important than reviewing somebody else's code. I mean, you, you have you have your own task, and you are supposed to review one of the other ones. This is more like you focus more on completing your task first, and then you work on reviewing, or or do you try to review quickly to have the other ones move ahead? Well, personally, I first finish the line and then review. <laughs> yeah, I give uh, same priority to both tasks. Either I am reviewing the code, or I am working on my own. And then the question I. Uh, no, the fourth person isn't here, but he had a comment about uh, uh, it would be better to split 
in features rather than server side, client side. Uh, so estimate by the server side. Uh, I think we have encouraged that all the way from the beginning. And then the question is, why uh, why is it tempting for students? And why did you decide to split the client side and the server side? Was there a rationality for that? I think we talked about uh, having going through features rather than doing it. And, and now you were saying in retrospect, we should have done that way. And then the question is, why did you do it? So, so what was the reason why you divided the client server? Um, if I talk about the sprints, sprints were divided according to one feature. As I told you, in this sprint we work on the scenario three, right? The whole thing. Uh, but when we created issues on Jira, then we actually split down for the back end and the front end because we were entirely different teams on different uh, locations. So I guess it was more important to you know, achieve to complete something rather than just come up with at the end the discussion that this is the proposed solution we have come up with, but we could not implement it. So that's why we, we try to divide the task in as smaller as possible. So again, uh, there is one task if uh, we, uh, if I show you the board for example, there is a task for, task not an issue I must say, there is a task for developing a backend API for a specific feature. Then there is a task for uh, designing the screens for that particular feature and then there was a third task to integrate those things. And the integration task was done like by sitting together. If he faced some issues like he said, uh, there must be some way, something changed in the backend API. So I did it right away. So if we talk about uh, dividing features in the sprint, we did it actually. That, that but I think we was referring to the fact that you divide them into small tasks and you estimate the tasks independently rather than working yes. on Yes. Because for example, if I am working with the front-end developer uh, sitting together, then it's fine. We can create one task, move it to to-do uh, to uh, list, and then we can start working on it. But if we are working on different location, and obviously we are working on some different times, then we had to make some tasks that we were able to complete even if the other person is not available.